Hello, my name is V Sin, and this is a snapshot of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Now, this came, this game came out on October the twenty third, twenty twelve, for the PlayStation Vita in North America. Now, this is the Street Fighter and Tekken crossover fighting game. Um, base, the short Street version Fighter is Cross they took the entire Street Fighter four cast, the entire Tekken cast, stuck them in the same game, changed some mechanics around, and called it a day. Okay, that's slightly exaggerating. I'll show you in a second. First of all, one setting that you have to do right off the bat. Battle control settings. What we're looking for is these two options right at the very bottom. Press square, set back to the default. You can see that these two are normally launcher and throw. Problem is, these are bound to the rear touchpad. And if you try to do combos and if you, like hold your Vita period, you're gonna keep hitting these and you're gonna keep screwing up your moves. Take my advice, immediately turn these down to no binding, right off the bat. The rest of them, you can do them whatever, however you feel like. I mean, you do have quick combo one and two as well. Those also have a um, binding to the regular pad. Other than that, you have fairly standard settings, sound settings, separate sliders, screen settings, show or hide UI, system help shows you what the menus do, Crosslink and casual style settings, as well as version information in case you want to know which patch you're on, so you know stuff like frame changes and damage and all that good stuff. All right, on to the actual game. Now, the apart from being a fighting game and having unique characters and all that, the main unique factor in Street Fighter Cross Tekken is the gem system. I'm going to show you that for a bit. So let's select Ryu. Why the hell not? Now the way the gem system works is you can take you have three gem slots on any given character. You can you pick them before the battle starts, and you can have um, a, up to five presets on any given character. Have multiple presets saved to a character, sort of thing. So let's see. We'll edit sample one. So you can go in here, and there are two major types of gems: boost gem. Oops, wrong button. Boost gem and assist gem. Boost gems give you a stat boost depending on if you complete certain actions. For example, um, if I connect with five normal moves, then this one will give me a 10% damage output increase for 20 seconds. Some gems also do have drawbacks. For example, this one will increase my damage output, but reduce my movement speed. Assist gems, on the other hand, are persistent passive effects, basically. Um, you have the easy input and super easy input ones. I'm going to go over those in a second, but you also have stuff like a cancel assist, auto throw escape. A, mo a lot of, several of these are automatic actions. So for example, if you're someone who forgets to block, then you can get a gem that will help you block basically. Um, <clears throat> you'll also notice that it said there do not have enough gem slots. Um, you can see it's a little bit of a small number, but on the right side of the list, you can see a small three next to auto throw escape. What that signifies is it takes up up to three, all three of your gem slots in order to use this. Similarly, auto throw escape level one only takes up two gem slots, etc. What you may have also noticed are the shopping carts. What the heck does that mean? Well, that means D, L, frickin' C. In this case, um, because they're available here, these are the ones that are basically included DLC, but the DLC itself does come with a whole bunch of these gems, and some of them are, for example, character-specific stuff, and I don't know about you, but that is selling power. Regardless, you don't actually have to touch too much of this. Um, the basic options seem to be decent enough as it is, so whatever. Um, I also like to gripe lightly about the easy input gems, specifically easy input, not super easy. Because super easy um, boils it down to like two moves, basically. But easy input is, in other games, the equivalent input style of pad assist, basically. So, for example, if you do a circle movement, let's say a half circle forward movement on a stick, the easy input would change that to left, down, right. It simplifies it to make it easier on a pad. Most, like I said, most other games have that as a built-in option. This one, though, you have to gimp your stats in order to do it. Doesn't bug me too much. I'm used to inputting pad by now, but whatever. Also, you may have noticed that this entire thing is controlled by touch. 
Um, it's, you could probably tell how small these icons are, and in fact, all the buttons are pretty tiny. So if you have large fingers, you're going to have a pain in the ass of a time trying to manage these menus. Um, I also would like to show you character color customization, but I'm just going to show you the start here, and I'll show you why I'm not going to show it to you. If the entire thing is supposed to be displayed vertically on the Vita, but it, it's like you... I don't know. You were probably watching it at least a majority of the people, according to my analytics, are watching this off of a PC or a computer like that, so you're not going to have a fun time trying to watch this. Suffice it to say, though, you can you, you can save up to three presets for color. You can customize the color. Um, by default, the game comes with two special colors as well as black and white for customization, but there is a crap ton of free DLC that you can use to change the color that way. Um, battle profile, all that really does is it changes those, well, you can see the too predictable banner in the top right corner and the please be gentle quote. It basically, you let, it allows you to change that. Um, there's also a gallery where, there's also a gallery in this game where you can show um, various bits of artwork and video and all that. I'm going to quickly show you the arcade menu and then we'll, I'm going to go into uh, another different battle. Dude, there's Burst Kumite, which is just tons of CPUs, and there's arcade mode. It says watch the story unfold, but it doesn't quite specify that you actually have to have specific pairings in order to be able to see certain stories. For example, if you just pick two random Tekken characters, there is a generic Tekken story for it. Similarly, if you pick two random Street Fighter char characters, there is a generic Street Fighter story. However, if you pick specific characters like um, say, Ryu and Ken, um, Jin and Sayu, etc. Very specific pairings. Then there is special story cutscenes at the beginning and the end for that story. That's about it. Um, you can adjust your CPU difficulty over here, easiest all the way up to hardest. I'm going to set it down to medium. Um, you can also see this fight request option here. This is when you're in the middle of our arcade, do you want to have online? If you enable this mode, what it does is it'll take these five options down here for online matchmaking. And essentially, as soon as it finds a match, no matter how far along, even if you're in the middle of a loading screen, it'll immediately rip you out of the arcade mode, put you in an online battle, you complete that, and then it restarts the battle that you were at. So for example, if you were like halfway through a battle, then haha, too bad, you have to restart it all over again. You do have the option to also use this in ad hoc, um, for, you know, people in your immediate vicinity. But, you know, for the most part, I used ranked matches for it. Um, there is also the generic online, the network mode, which will let you either queue up or queue up for ranked, or there are also lobby options available with rotations and all that good stuff. So let's go into challenge here. Now, challenge comes in three parts. Tutorial is the tutorial. It forces you into it at the start of the game. Uh, sorry, when you first start up the game. Trials are basically complete this combo missions. Oop, not sure why I picked that option. Oh well. So you can see I've completed um, some for Dalsim, some for Asuka, some for Horang, whatever. The part where I'm going to start playing finally is mission mode. Mission mode basically gives you a whole bunch of battles and gives you a set a set of conditions. For example, fist communication is you have to use normal moves in order to deal damage. You have to use special moves in order to deal damage. So what I'm going to do is girls only. I'm not, I'm not sure how well I'm going to do because I've actually failed this repeatedly. But girls only is just you beat the battle. There are girls there. I'm going to pick my usual. Uh, there you go. And you can see the Asuka as color customizations there in my usual colors. Um, this is also where you pick your gem loadouts. You can have up to five different samples. You can also edit these, as I mentioned earlier. Let's get into a battle. Um, I'm not too good at describing fighting games. However, if I have to describe it, it would probably be all the Street Fighter characters are Street Fighter characters, whereas the Tekken characters are simplified for the for Street Fighter mechanics. Like, that's really what I would have to say. Also, I have problems commentating over fighting games. Oh, great. Yeah, 
Yep. Yes, I finally got the follow up. All right. Yay. Dumb wake up special. Yeah, that that should never be done unless you expect your opponent to hit low, but whatever. All right. Next battle. So in this case, it's just wave after wave of enemy um, pairings. There's also the f Four Kings one, which is a whole bunch of solar enemies, etc. And f them, there are, of course, other ones which have crazy conditionals, like you have to do a 15-hit combo for one of them. Oop. Oh, I'm screwing this up pretty bad. Oop. There we go. Mm. Well, that was an accidental button mash. All right, there we go. Oops. I don't know, you can probably just see I'm spamming the same combo and over and over again. That gets me in so much trouble when I play online, but it works against CPUs, so whatever. Next round. Yay. And, pff, I don't know, I mean, this is... Even though this is a mission mode, this is more or less how the game works out. Um, <coughs> if, if I would have to mention some extra things about, say, learning the game, though, I will say that... The game is not very descriptive with telling you how things are supposed to work. Like, it doesn't do a very good job of, like, for example, describing that you have to do certain, say, you have to hold down a button in this particular manner in order to complete combos. And, you know, it, it just doesn't do a good job of teaching you. So if you're going to, say, do the mission modes or get any better at this, you are going to have to look up stuff online. I'm sorry, the tutorial's pretty crappy. Um, let's see. Anything else worth mentioning while I get through this thing? Hmm. Apart from that, though, yeah, this is more or less how the game goes. Uh, let's just get through this. Get a bit of Let's Playing. Yep. <coughs> Oops. Yep. This is not going to go well. Ah, uh, oh well. Yeah, it wasn't going to last. You In this particular mode, you have a persistent health bar through all the missions, and I couldn't quite finish off. So, whatever. Failed. Doesn't matter too much. Also, um, out of random note, even though Dan shows up in the these screens here, he's not actually playable for some reason. I'm really not sure why. Other than that, yeah, that's more or less the gist of how the game goes. Um, I could play more, but... For the most part, let's get to a verdict now, and then I'll show you a I'll show you a cutscene at the start of the mission mode, and I'll end it there. So basically, what I'm looking at here is a game that. Well, to be let's put it this way: there is no Vita Street Fighter, and there is no Vita Tekken. There is a PSP version of Tekken available on the North American PSN. Um, and I, I've played it before. It actually plays pretty well, which is. It's also the reason why I pick Horong and Asuka, by the way. Um, but overall, if you're looking for a Street Fighter replacement, it's not too bad as that. I mean, there are quite a few mechanical differences here. Um, namely, the gems do change your playstyle, and it's a little bit more of a frantic combo mix-up centric sort of thing. 
Yes, all the Street Fighter characters do have um, more... have basically the same mechanics as they do in Street Fighter, let's be real here. Um, but other than that, it's mostly faithful to what Street Fighter does. Tekken, on the other hand, Tekken is, like, for example, it doesn't have the, how should I call it, 2.5D setting, so you can't, like, dodge in and out of the screen. Um, quite a few of the mechanics are simplified. For example, Horrorong has no punches in this version. Like, maybe they did it for stylization, but Horrorong does actually have punches in Tekken. Also, um, there are a few semi-joke characters. There's Pac-Man over here. <laughs> I could also so show you Kuro and Toro, but you can notice here that I can't actually select them. There's a reason for that, because Toro is a really terrible Ryu, and Kuro is a really terrible um, Akuma. Like, really. like They have the exact same moveset, but they just have no reach, no damage. So anyways, Pac-Man and like middle eight, midlife crisis Mega Man. I don't know. Just screw around here. I'm going to lose in like two rounds because I don't know how to play them, but let's screw around a little bit here. While the entire planet became enthralled with the mysterious box known as Pandora, in a small corner of the world, something began to stir. Well, if one were to look closer, it would be like more than one thing was stirring. No one knows where they came from or how they came into being. Yet one thing was certain. They were headed for the box. Hooray, desynced voice acting. Yeah, the voice acting is pretty miserable. If it's at least the narrator voice acting is pretty miserable. Um, also, the subs are desynced from the voice for some reason. But oh well. And then I'll just show off these two goofballs. Yeah, apparently it's Pac-Man on Mokujin for some reason. Let's go. Get out of here. Oops. Yeah, apparently Pac-Man is actually Mokujin. Because you can see that's Martial Law's move. But you can see I'm just losing pretty hard here because I'm not good at either of these characters. Okay. Uh, random super attack. Uh, why, Mega Man? Why do you have no reach? Yay, I barely won that. Oh well. <laughs> well, these are the goofy characters. Uh, Pac Man does, in fact, have his story mode, as you can tell, but whatever. Uh, Mega Man, why do you have no reach? Mega Uppercut. <laughs> I'm not sure how Mega Man lived through that. Oh well.
Also in arcade mode, you get this battle rank. Well, no, at the end of all battles, you get battle rank, as well as these little quips. <laughs> yeah, apparently Pac-Man speaks in ghosts and Pac-Man. Whatever. I don't know, I'd say that's enough of that. Let's get to a verdict, shall we? Would I recommend this game? Because here's the thing. First of all, I got this for free off PS Plus. So if you're getting it for free off PS Plus, or at least quote-unquote free, then I say, sure, why the hell not? Go for it. But then there's the other question, which is, if you didn't get, didn't get the PS Plus deal and say you're looking at the base $40 price tag or a discount somewhere else, would it be worth it then? These are a few things that I should have mentioned earlier, but didn't. First of all, this game does have cross-play with the PS3 version. That is definitely important because it means that in the long run you are going to have an online population. Like, without a doubt, that is definitely one of the really nice things about this version. They're, they're going to have an online population. Uh, as compared to, say, um, Blaze Blue or Injustice or anything like that, all those games are Vita-only online modes. So you're, you would, you have a lot more trouble finding people. Um, the other thing, though, is that say that a Vita version of Tekken or a Vita version of Street Fighter came out in the future, would it be worth taking over those? And honestly, yes. It, I think it just has enough of its own little flair. You can have fun with the whatever the way el hell we want to really. Eesh. Commentating over fighting game. Hard. Ah. Ugh. I don't know. Let's just wrap it up and I'll call it TLDR. TLDR, if you did get it for like free off PS Plus or something, then like it's more of a why the hell not. But at full retail 40, there's the other th problem of net features because there are quite a few other games. Um, Off the top of my head, the two big, the three big Ones that have good, strong single player features are Blaze Blue, any of the Blaze Blues really, um, Dead or Alive 5 Plus, and um, what the hell was it called again? Mortal Kombat as well as Injustice. Those four, not three, are the ones that do have fully featured single players. Whereas games like this, um, namely SFXT, um, Marvel vs. Capcom, those ones are mostly emphasizing the online play. So, if you're going to get into this and pay the 40 bucks or a slight discount as a used copy, for example, you have to be willing to get into the online play. If you're playing it just for the single player, then you should probably get it at a discount. My name has been Vsin. Thanks for watching.